Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Griffin. As you can see, we're doing a little bit of tidying up. The uh, contractors have gotten rid of most of their stuff. And uh, it's pretty obvious that uh, they're not going to fix the road the way I hoped. In fact, it looks like the plan is just to leave this leftover gravel here. So what I'm doing is just tidying the pile up a little bit using their equipment before they take it away. And uh, hopefully we can just smooth out. You can see I've dumped a little bit in the hole there. And I just let's try it from this side. Just want to smooth it out. Just as best we can. What's that like? It's not going to be perfect. Maybe not too bad. from this side try not to put the blade through our other silo get that lump off there Just see if I can tip. This doesn't want to quite behave. I think that will probably have to do us. We might just be able to get a little bit off the top of that little lump near the edge there. Uh, and then the balance will do with the landscaping tool. It's not too bad. But the good news is we can um, start using it today. Yeah, I think that'll work fine as long as we don't go racing across there. Uh, so they've said as long as we don't fill it up uh, for at least another month or so, and realistically I don't think we're in too much danger of that, um, we're good to go. So... That's why I thought I'll just move all this around while we've got access to the equipment. Get that bit there. Come back and get those three little lumps and that'll do us. a little pile of stone should we ever need it now in terms of other uh, jobs to do today we've got um, we've got plenty I think we'll uh, be spending the day on our farm so uh, it's not really contract season but 
anyway but uh, we've got plenty of work to be going on with so we'll just leave this equipment over here and uh, they can take that away through the course of the day I think and uh, we'll get on with our business first order of business is to empty that forage wagon that's sitting in the barn so this grass we picked up several months ago it'll be fairly putrid in the bottom there but we're going to turn it into silage anyway so let's get that out of here overload that and um, the cows are in good shape we got 30 there um, we'll get some more in there next month financially we're in an okay position uh, we've got the hay to pick up around the house and also over in that field that we started baling the other day so why did you Not sure why that stopped. So we'll uh, we'll go over and check the east meadow and see where the baler got up to it. I don't want to turn all that into hay bales because we can just as easily store hay here in the new silo and uh, create silage if we want to, or just uh, store it up for the moment. At some point, whilst we want to concentrate on our uh, our beef herd that we're creating, um, Jocelyn is quite keen uh, to have a small dairy herd as well. So we'll um, we might put a a pasture in that enables us to to do that. Okay, so it looks like we have a number of bales out here. What I think we'll do is... Um, still hasn't finished the headland, so we'll go and start the baler with a worker just continuing on the course, and then we know it leaves the far end, so we'll go and uh, pick all that hay up. And that way, at least, we get this job well progressed. We want the next waypoint. And start. You should do fine. The other thing we'll need to do is get a way to move bales uh, you'll remember we've left a bunch of bales. Not a bunch. We've left a couple of bales uh, up the top. Uh, so we need to go and fix those. And we're clearly going to have a range here. And we've got some silage bales sitting there that we might also want to sell. So I think it makes sense uh, to get a trailer that will enable us to move bales around uh, and just generally a flat trailer I think for whatever tasks we've got. We've also got to spread some fertiliser on our wheat field there and mulch the cornfield over the way so um, We've got rain coming in the middle of the day. We probably want to get the fertiliser on before that. Pick up a lot of this, these little lumps across here. We'll 
could do with the win right we're going to keep on with this sort of activity sure where to put the if we were to put in a a small field for a, a dairy flock a dairy flock dairy herd and all the paraphernalia that goes with uh, feeding milk cows I'm not quite sure where to put it but we've got plenty of room potentially in the land around the house um, which has some appeal because just of the, the amount of uh, work looking after them uh, but equally on the other side neither I nor Jocelyn are all that keen on a manure pit right beside the house so um, probably rules that out to an extent um, another alternative is to put it over on a piece of land of this meadow sort of on an edge somewhere maybe even down towards uh, the front corner where we came in uh, it's a little bit steeper there but that's that's fine, we could use that quite well. Uh, and there's a good space that we're not really using even for this grass field that we've marked out uh, at the minute. So maybe that's an option. Or we could uh, put it on the other side of uh, the big barn sort of in behind the fermenting silo there so I mean we're spoiled for choice choice to be honest the it, you know it's nice to have all this land I just without having a master plan for the farm just want to be a little bit thoughtful about where we locate things so that we minimize the amount of moving later on I remember buying my first house and having grown up in a family that was always renovating houses you know, the first house was pretty run down and in need of love and attention and I was keen to get into it and uh, my father said just pull your head in a little bit yes there's lots of stuff you want to change and will change but how about you live in it for six months and then make your decision and uh, that turned out to be one of those pieces of advice that first of all was very helpful but uh, has definitely stuck with me because there are things that hit you in the face day one that turn out to not be necessarily the priorities uh, for change. And in some cases, in particularly renovating older houses, can be features that you get down the track and wish you'd retained. <laughs> so... So we're up to 80%, so we're almost done here. And we will certainly be able to pull plenty of hay off here, so we'll let the baler go and then uh, later 
towards the end of the day, I'll come over and uh, take another 50,000 litres of, of hay off. That'll give us a good... Well, we're actually going to get closer to 60 by the looks, so it'll give us a good 100,000 in the in the silo and it looks like this is going to be a good time for us to stop anyway so we don't go put wet hay into our brand new silo yeah so potentially we could put um a cow barn for milk cows just down here by the road access would be really easy um I'm sure we could make a flat section. I'm not looking for a huge milk herd. Um, I think uh, Kevin's kind of got his heart set on being a Texas-style rancher, so he wants lots of Angus and Limousin around the place, and that'll come in time. I hope they remember to take their heavy equipment sign. Right you are. Uh, we've got we can make hay from grass and we can make silage uh, from grass or uh, chaff. So, and obviously we can store hay. So um, we've got a little bit of grass in there, which we will uh, turn on and make into silo and you can see i don't know if you recall from before that but the recipe is uh better than uh last the old one and much faster so we'll turn that on now we're going to feed hay to our cattle so having a good place to uh to store hay is a good thing Let's put this orange wagon away. And we'll grab the mulcher that we bought last time. It's all on the floor. Guessing our uh, bailing tractor has run into something. Probably a bale would be in all likelihood. Let's just hop across and investigate. Bit too miserable to be doing that in an open tractor, I think, and uh, I'm not sure how practical baling hay bales in the rain is. So,
I'm sure our worker's much happier to be in the cab there. We'll let them just keep trucking across the field. I don't see any reason to put force play on now that there's a headland. Should turn fine. I wound the cruise control down so that it won't drive at a ridiculous speed. That's the it's handy, I guess, to have the Katrina ignore speed. Now, what is this? This is a NTO. Oh, oh, it's on lease, so we're not going to be able to modify it anyway. Let's get in out of the rain. And maybe see what's in the store. Hmm. So that certainly become can become a bale trailer, but it's not the most flexible and potentially is a bit small for our operation. Uh, this forage wagon would be a great pickup. Uh, but we won't have the money until we sell the corn next month. If we go and have a look at trailers. Regular trailers. I think we're going to have to look at bale trailers, to be honest. Yes, so let's have a look at bale trailers, bale loaders. Twenty thousand, thirty six thousand. I've used the Johnston before, they are very versatile. These lizard ones. So something like that would potentially be quite useful. We could put that on the back of our, our ute, 36,000. Now uh, where else might there be? Cargo cart. The other thing we need to check on is our cotton spinning operation. Which is working its way through the cotton we have. Uh, so still another couple of months to process all of the cotton. There'll be some fabric sitting down there, which we'll sell in due course. Uh, the best time to sell fabric is in three or four months time. So we'll go and do that then. Meanwhile, we just want this rain to stop so we can do our fertilizing. So it should be any moment with any luck. Well, the rain's stopped. Uh, had some lunch. Uh, we're about halfway through this field, so the worker filling in for me did a, a pretty reasonable job. So what I'm going to do, I don't want to put the bigger tractor, the bigger John Deere, it's more expensive to run uh, on this, but we do need the row crop tyres on the fertiliser so we'll stop just here and run across 
and fertilize the wheat while the weather is with us. Old B to turn on our crop sensors, which should detect the crop here. And how wide are we spreading there? A little bit further into the field. That looks pretty good. This shouldn't take particularly long. It is using quite a lot of fertilizer, but then the nitrogen levels were pretty ordinary in this field. So we'll just do ourselves a bit of a headland here. I'm, I think we should have enough fertilizer. Yeah, that's not quite, quite, oh yes, maybe we are. There we go. This edge out right. Any luck? We'll. Oops, we're just a fraction in. Somewhat around about here. The minimap is very helpful, giving us an idea of the course to run. to fertilize that cornfield when we plant it in a couple of months also. So that's pretty much this job done. We'll close out the day Just finishing the mulching on the cornfield. giving some thought to that crone forage wagon and uh, whilst it's a, a great deal and it would be a terrific pickup it would also consume a good two-thirds of the the proceeds from the corn harvest and can't help think that they would be better put to uh, 
more investment uh, in our ranching operation. So, you know, another, uh, another pasture set up uh, and initially stocked. Uh, and also we've got to put aside uh, some funds so that we can get a harvester. Uh, we certainly were unlikely to be able to afford to, to purchase one, but um, for this this season, but uh, it's going to not be cheap. These aren't tiny fields, so we're certainly going to need a mid-size harvester, uh, which will make a reasonable dent, and we need to have some money put aside to deal with that. So. As much as it would be nice, I don't think we can justify uh, the crone, uh, but we do need a flatbed. So we'll have to find one of those. I just realized the only category I didn't search in the shop uh, was low loaders. Uh, and it could be that um, there's an even better trailer than the lizard one we looked at uh, in the low loader category. So we'll have a look at that. We don't need to uh, to purchase that today. So there's always the chance uh, that we'll get that next time or that something suitable will come up in the store. So... That's where we're at. Wintry day light is fading pretty quickly, as you can see. Uh, we can turn the crop sensors off. Not that we were using them on this field anyway. Uh, but we've pretty much got this one mulched and uh, therefore ready to put the corn in well we'll need a plant uh, there's another expense we'll need a planter to to pop that corn in too so I think we've got plenty of things drawing on our our funds And that light is fading very quickly. So uh, we're coming to the end of this field just at the right time by the looks. Just grab those stalks in the corner without trying to run our roller on the road There's another piece of ground just there we could potentially utilize i don't know how much the plots beside us run for have a look at that because it's reasonably flat over this way also. Okay, well, that's pretty much it for the light. I'm doing this a little bit by feel and the weeds are a bit of a giveaway for the little pieces that I missed. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you soon back here on Griffin. See ya.